All right, people, you know what it is, man. Fresh is here, and guess who I'm with? Chaos. Chaos, what's up? What's going on, man? Yo, what's that boy tonight? Everything good, G? Yeah, yeah, everything crisp. Yo, introduce yourself to some people that may know you, some people may not know you. Tell the people who you are briefly. Yeah, man, I don't know what the time bring, boss, man, is it? Um, you know, dancehall, reggae record, and artist based in Florida. Been doing music for quite some time now, as you mean. Like I said, some people know me. Um, some people just I get familiar with the name because of the Tambrin Association, uh, melanin featuring contents, taboo, you know, new Celine, songs like dopamine and the project dopamine, as you mean the whole tri-state area lucky, you see me? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, boom. How you guys started into music, man? Like tell people a little bit something about that. Let me know something. Yeah, it's crazy, you know, um, it's not even about starting out. I feel like I just fell in love with this thing because I've always been around it. Um, like I always tell people, uh, my mom migrated in, I think, 97 or 98 and fought to the U.S. and basically just left me with her uncle, you see me? Mm. And he was the kind of the one who kind of instilled the whole, you know, musical presence that I have right now. He was the one who teach me about music, where the, the music is coming from, how much it means to Jamaican people or, or our people. You get what I say? Um, you know, him teach you the basics about being on key, knowing how to vibe to a rhythm. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, like everything else just followed afterwards, like the writing skills followed from high school days and, and you know, just experiences in life and just things I'm read and so on. But yeah, I don't feel like, I don't feel like it, it's something I'm start out now. I just feel like I'm just growing out and just grow for love it more and more each day, isn't it? Got you, got you. Well, yeah. Around what age or, or when you feel like you really started to fall in love with the music, or, or when did you start writing or recording? I may say. All right, so like the earliest, the, like the early stages of of my life, like may I say, you know, I grew up around this uncle, and it was more about education and so on at first, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then like the later part of, of like primary school, going into high school, I did you know pick up like the whole dancing and whatever. But it's, it's really about 2005, 2006, like me and my friend, them, um, there's this youth named Artillery, there's this next youth named um, Bobo, call him Lamar, you know, him did the star for our football team, like uh, them youth, them used to power it from a yeah, little youth. Yeah. And then we really start, you know, clash each other, right, music in a high school, not big, you know, the traditional dance art thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, in 2006, um, my father had a friend named Yohan, you know, in past a couple of years ago. He was keeping a thing in St. Elizabeth called Hype 2K6. And that was my first ever performance on like a stage holding a microphone, being in front of a crowd. Is me? And I just know I'm get the first feeling of what it feel like for quote unquote bust the crowd. I remember Rick Ross was performing the night. Enough people are performing the night, is me? And like me, as a little, you know, teenager in high school, get a big ass forward. Yeah. You know, the whole community I talk about it. Mugga school did. Everybody I talk about it. Girls start more different towards me. You know, picture show up in other papers, the whole work. So it was just like a joy and a feeling what me did enjoy. You get me I say, and not having like my parents around for kind of, you know, guide me with certain things. Like music was kind of like an escape for me, you know, because I always depend on the phone with them and talk. But when I see them, and I like now when they have FaceTime on them thing, I mean, I see them them time. Me. So I feel like because of not being around them and, you know, just wanting to have something to latch on to, like, I, I have a deeper appreciation for music because it was always there for me, you see me? Yeah, definitely. Could I write out some frustration or, you know, could I always turn to a song for give me a vibe whenever me I think about things or, you see me I say? But yeah, um, like the latter part of high school now, you know, we are listening to the, the, the Idonias and just a forward up. We are listening to the Mavadas, the Cartel, like things did start becoming more interesting for we. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the Bounty Killer and the whoever no more and the Clashing and whatever. And it just them two artists there on it, you know, and some bad rhythm have come out. They did have Soul Seeker rhythm, I think, drop like or seven or eight. Mm -hmm. um, they did have Drumline rhythm. Um, that I went, I don't know, this is scatter. Them thing that we start DJ pan, power cut rhythm, show. Um, what the other and a show time, but there's an other show off, show, show off, show off, yeah, show off with him, beast with him. Them rhythm there, oh nine, rare, you see me. I guess I would start really kind of you know, feel love feel like I like the, 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 the latter parts of high school for me, which was 2007. Then I migrate and come states and meet Elmer, who's the producer of Cranium. Nobody ever know, mm -hmm. and I guess now you know him, I learn him thing, me kind of get the groove of hearing home sound, voice, and the whole works. And when I said probably about age 18, when it really set in for me, like, yo, you know, 
yeah, but I really love this thing. I want to chase it, you know. Got you, got you, got you. So, what do you what do you feel like is your creative process? How you get your creative process through music? Because when I hear <laughs> when I hear chaos, I, I I hear come. You can switch it up a lot. You got some gal tunes. You got gun tunes. You got some tunes that you know represent the gals. Them and like it, every everything is a different vibe. So, how yeah, do you I mean, how do you get your creative process? I mean, it's just life. Like things are my experience. I mean, I like to sing about things I'm gonna experience. Yeah, yeah, cool. If you even hear me sing about a bad man thing, a bad man thing I experience in a real life. You get what I mean? I say, yeah, yeah. Um, like my girl rough dog. Like I'm not really share much. I probably the first interview this may ever say this, but my girl rough. Mm. I'm experiencing some things in my lifetime. You get what I mean? I say it's just that I'm not one of those people who like to try to make a story around it or not. Like I'm really experience it. Does it mean? Um, so we did just have that in a way, but me, like I always want to take a different part, which is why when you hear me, I'm not really sing about no gun thing, I really sing about fucking the girl them or you see me? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if this is an edit for you. Yeah, but you, we you normally sing about the ladies, pleasuring the ladies, or just sing some cultural tune or something like that motivate the youth them because I see where violence do to friends, to family members. So it's like I never really liked the road there, but I can do it. Yeah, so whenever yeah. you hear that vibe they like me, I get grimy my, my head must be really hot. You see me? But I mean, separate and apart from that, my inspiration just come from life and experiences from life. Like whatever my encounter, I try to put another music, I try to make it as real as possible. Even if it's not something when I witness firsthand, you know, like for example, um, a perfect example is when I find the song Feelings when I start cash they have. Like I never really me me I sing, but it was a bridging me over here. I bridging I tell him girl say yo, you know, I mean I have no feelings, you know, I have a bag of girl, ray, ray, ray. So it's like we use that our family, it's something. So you know, the inspiration come from everywhere, brother, really and truly. Um, but my life is stick to the girl thing, is it because that my experience the most that I know about the most. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just try to keep it neutral because every kind of um I'd say individual support case. You have the girl them, you know, you have the thugs them, you have the thugs when the two in the badness, but them still like the girl thing, the gallist thing. And then, you know, like you have the ladies them who just listen to me for because I'm a vice, so I just hold my care myself or whatever. So whenever me, me I make songs, me think about how them I go be in the bathroom, I get ready to it. You know, how them I go flex to it when them I drive in them care, how them I go introduce it to one of them friends. The whole works. Yeah, but insp- inspiration falls from all different places, you see me. And then the motivation now come from the family and my youth and whatever for do it every day and for learn it more every day. For you know, make a life from it, you see me. Got you, got you. Now one thing I can definitely say every 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 time I hear some tunes from you, I could say that you are a well versatile dog. I could I could definitely say that. <laughs> yeah, so- but try to keep it away, that broke uh, I the one the, the one problem we have with even like all music every day is like when an artist find a song is like I'm stick to it for too long. Like, yeah. With, with like count, countless amount of artists. Even if them sing girl thing, gun thing, whatever, it just sound like the same song, like a continued version or something else. No, nah, I could like agree with, with that. Me, whenever people listen to me, more you say, yo, this are not the same artist, or whatever the case may be, isn't it? Like when you hear my girl song them, you feel really feel like you're in the moment, like you're picturing me and say, it must sing about badness if you believe a bit. If you feel like say if a boy step on your clock, you want boss him face. Mm. <laughs> you see me? Yeah, yeah. And it must sing about reality. If you make a you get up and want to work money, that's just me as a creative. Like I always like to put things where me experience or my friend them experiencing other music so it can be relatable so that people can pick it up and it can even if it's a song when a song like it have longevity to it, like for example, Tambrin, like every time people listen to Tambrin, I'm sure it sound fresh because in other verse, they're put things where, you know, kind of take away your mind from it just having a catchy hook. Mm-hmm. I mean, I said, the girl, I'm a bad man, I'm not on a clone, whatever. So I just, I just, my creative process that, and it's not even like me, I chase the versatility. Like I feel like it just forward sometime, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and that's one thing I was gonna say too. It like every every time you 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 kind of hear hear chaos or hear the flow, it, it sounds natural. I'm, I don't think it's one of your songs that I really heard, and you know you could tell when an artist is trying a little bit too much and you know trying to stick with a certain type of flow, but not everything just just you know balance itself. I I could say you, chaos. How did the name come up? Yo, all right, the the name thing. You know, sorry about that. Somebody message something important. You good? But, the, the name thing come up is like at first me they have a fuck up name because my father is a police, isn't it? 
Yeah, I told her my father need that. My father was a my father was a police, is it me? Damn, can't take the call it. Yeah, but because you know Jamaica and the whole association with Jamaicans and police, them used to call police squaddy back in the days. Mm. Hold on a second. Sorry about that, bro. Yeah, Sorry. no problem, bro. Sorry about this. We should I turn off my phone. Um, yeah, but my dad was like a cop, so people used to call me King Squad and them fuck with it from high school. So um, like this is like my first year now when I start record and I'm excited. How like, this was 2009, the first time I got back at Jamaica since my grade 2008. You know, I have two of my friends in my yard. There's Ajay and next to you, I'm part close in the name concept. And they were in the yard and I tell them, say, yo, like, I really feel like something can come off this music thing and find people for record with whatever. Because what part I come from, brother? Like, from St. Elizabeth, if you ever ask nobody, like, who make it from St. Elizabeth, the only person we can really think of is Protégé. Mm. Is it me? And many people don't even fucking know Protégé come from our side. So, if you even go back to Jamaica and tell my friend, them send me a record and anything there to them, it was mind-blowing. Is it me? When even, like, if you see nowadays, like, recording so simple, like, go back then, would I say, what the fuck me did fussy about? But at the time, I did just so eager for hear myself and for can actually make songs and them thing there. And for think about for submit them to, to, to like radio and the whole vibe, you see me? But my day back, my, my day back in the country, me I show my dog, say, yo, you know, I feel like music or something I really want to take on, dog, you see it? Like, I have a love feat, I have a passion feat, whatever, I feel like I'm writing, I get better and the whole works. I tell them at the time, say, like, yo, more want to refine my vibe some more, more on the video, the whole works. Them telling them before video even get popular. Yeah, and yeah. Show them the thing like yo, I want to do this whole star life thing. I want to start my label, ray, ray, ray. And the first thing one of my dogs said to me is like, yo, brother, but you're going to use a name like King Squaddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget. We sit down up on the front porch. And I said to him, say, yo, what the fuck else make your name? And the man just like randomly, brother, I swear to God. Like this is the first thing the man said as, as soon as I said this to him. Yo, brother, KSF a name and anything you touch mash up, because I named that reason about something else before yeah. that. And like from there, I say, yo, you know, say chaos no sound like a bad name and concept say, yo, you know, it's a fucking good idea that, you know. And I say, yo, chaos we're going to stick with. So big up Ajia. Ajia the first person for ever said, I'm going to just run with it. I never even look back. I'm just stick with it right through. Hold on, my laptop go for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but we can run. I mean, we can run still. We have 9% fun this. All right. No, that's good, though. That's good. That's a good story about the name. Um... A lot of people know chaos. I'm based in Florida too, so I, I definitely know a lot of people know you out here, really? right? Yeah, yeah. I'm in Orlando. Oh shit, shit, shit. Big up, big up, big up. Yeah, I'm, yeah, a, I'm originally from New York. Me, dog. Huh? Orlando, been one see my brother like me. I tell you, said, girl, I'm an Islander. I kid you not. Like this is why I made me deactivate my page so much, bro. Because people want to see so much of me, and it's like, more well, I don't have the answers, and then the whole COVID thing. Yeah. Well, even when when the place are open up, like Ireland, the girls be like, "Yo, we can't get a show. Like, put on something." You see me? But yeah, we, we, we definitely got we definitely got set setting up for that when outside fully open back up because COVID yeah, is man. COVID is a wicked thing right now. Yeah, How you man. feel like COVID affected you? Yo, I want to tell you saying that I don't even want to talk about the part. Then I'm going to ask the next question, and I feel like it fuck up my mental. Mm. And I'm, not even, I'm not even capping for this interview like mentally like so much times bro like i haven't been here you see me mm -hmm. and i know it's like something hard to talk about because you know people are gonna have their own speculation as soon as they talk so you have a hard time or whatever but re really and truly brother like my been a fake it for, for people not question me too much or whatever but it's it's been a rough time dog no that's real yeah. that's real a lot a lot, a lot of people it's something i'm used to bro like to just be here every day and i'm a host dog like more while I must feel lonely, dog. Is it like mm. it's hard to even make music because you're not experienced nothing, you're just fucking cloaked up, you see me? Yeah, she's locked it, down for real. It's been, it's been crazy, bro. Like, literally, a couple of days ago, I'm gonna start talk back to a therapist. Mm. Like, talk. It's been it's been a shit show, but real and truly, I hope like all of the fans of my music and just people in the world are just kind of adhere to you know, the safety guidelines and rules and just follow this thing so we can get it done and over with because mentally it'll fuck up enough people. Um, you know, enough people don't have no job no more and can't live the life no more no more and can't go party or, you know? Yeah, and you should like, fuck up a lot of people lifestyle. Like right now, me I try to not smoke too much. 
you know, because you know weed can take too much time, you know, your thoughts all over the place. But I try to not smoke too much or try to not indulge in a liquor. You see me? But on a day to day, bro, it's it rough. And we know enough, enough other artists, enough other creatives, enough other just people. You know, people are lose people, people are go through it, dog. You see? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, definitely, definitely. But what I was gonna what I was gonna touch on was saying that I'm based in Orlando, I'm based in Florida, so I know a lot of people know you in Florida. A lot of people yeah. know you a lot, a lot of a lot of different places, right? But do yeah. you feel like you're underrated? My honest opinion, I feel like you are very underrated. Yo, what's um, your personal opinion? I feel so, but I feel like it's my fault also, and this is why I say it's my fault. You see me and. The number one thing I've always learned from my grandmother is to always be true to yourself. Mm. You see me? And that's something I've carried with me for years. Rest in peace, my granny. But personally, I don't feel like I'm underrated. I just don't feel like I've given enough. Like, when you really check it, like, which are the songs that people know? Like, they don't have videos for it. These songs never really had a full rollout. Plan. So most of this, I feel like it's, it's kind of my fault. Because people not getting the music. Like, it's more than just Instagram or whatever. Like, you have to do things to get people attention at the end of the day. For people to come and listen to your shit or find something entertaining about you. And I just feel like it's my personality where kind of hinder that sometimes. Um, whether from working space or people listening to the music. As many a times, like, you know, people feel like I'm this stuck-up person or I'm this person that they can't come to or talk to. Like many times we'll go out and go party and girls be like, yo, I love you so much, but like me feel nervous. I don't know if I come try to talk to you. I go run me or whatever. You always have mean face on or something. So I just feel like, you know, like right now me, I learned enough, you know, about myself and about what I should have been doing and, and I haven't been doing, you see me? And I, 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 to some extent, I, I, I like accept the whole thing about underrated, but I feel like if I've done more as a creative, as an artist, if I had expressed myself better, if I had find ways to control my anxiety and them things, that when I have some big shows and things, like, I feel like my career would have propelled to a whole different level. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I get why people would be like, yo, I'm underrated. Because every time people discover me, the first thing they say is like, yo, how comes in a bigger? When they hear songs like dopamine, when they hear songs like melanin, when they hear, you know, things like when we re- re- recently released like New Celine, the Your Mind Still remix on my drop is like people mind blown by how creative I can be, the voice I have, how I can control it, you know, the whole of that shit. But then when I go up on like the grandma thing, I never... I've been a clone or, you know, whenever I do a TikTok things, like things remain relevant. And I, I feel like, you know, not just with me, I mean, like as artists, we have to just realize that it's more than the music now. You want to really get out there is more than the music now. And the reason I'm saying this, like, I could have just go with the flow where I say right now, if, oh, yeah, man, my underrated people need to do this and play my more or whatever. But for the sake of younger artists coming up, for the sake of, you know, People will feel like, you know, them do a lot and, and not get no credit. Like, this is why I may have said this. We need to do more as creators, not just with music. Putting out good music is one thing. You have to have visuals to represent it. You have to have a rollout plan. You have to have somebody behind you where you can get to, like, DJs. Other than who you know. And mm-hmm. be like, yo, this I'm a bridging. This I'm an artist. This I'm a friend. This I'm a brother. Whatever the case may be. However them want to present it. You have to make sure, say, whichever DJ you link with, whenever they might... Tell them, say, yo, bro, why you intro me song them different a party? All right, wherever the kick, that me start do and me start see different reactions when them play it and thing. We have to kind of, you know, take blame or fault for when things don't go because we're in control of it. Believe it or not, we're in control of it. Even DJs. Like, if you as a DJ drop a mix and it not have like, no artwork, it not have proper labeling, it not have you know, uh, one of them people are posted on the grandma say, oh, them are listen to it. Like, it's going to go nowhere. It's going to yeah, get yeah, facts. Views with views. If you don't have a link to say, yo, may I go send you a $50, $100 playlist this for me or, or repost this on SoundCloud for me or put this in a YouTube, whatever. Like, it's just going to be a hot mix that no one is hearing. And I feel like that's the same thing with my music. You get what I mean? I say, I feel like I just didn't represent a lot of these songs properly. And that's why they never get them run. I guarantee you, if I drop a video for dopamine today, like we'd see more for dopamine in the next five months than we've seen in the last three years of that project being dropped. I guarantee you that shit. 
No, I believe it. I believe it. And and, mm-hmm. and I think you're 100 percent right. I agree with you. Because I'm even learning that, like you said, like on a DJ aspect, on a DJ perspective, you know, like a yeah. lot of people know me to a certain extent as well, but it's not where I feel like it should be. And I realize it could be the same thing where it's your visuals and stuff like that. So I feel like it's definitely a learning it's just, process. It's just representation. It's just like, exactly. All right, like we, uh, me as an artist, I don't know, like I'm judgmental as fuck when my other people and my release things. Cause I'm like, bro, how you never do a video for this hour? And it's like, I don't have the same mentality for you myself. Have to just, you, have to have, you have to have things to represent you and things to represent your sound and the whole works. You see me? Like you have, to, you have to really brand the thing the right way. Like right now I'm gonna have the badness mixed with girl thing, thing them. Like I'm not, I'm not drop none of them yet. You know, people every day I'm gonna go up on Twitter. People, I mean, not Twitter, but Instagram. People be like, yo, when we can't get merch or whatever. Like, me as a person, I thoroughly think through shit. If you buy this shit and wear it, if you feel like you get something from Nike, not something from, you know, just somebody where I try a thing. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be spending your money. Yeah, definitely. That's them. It's the same thing like with music. Like, we have to treat music like a product. You get what I say? Like, we have to package it the right way. Just like whoever package them thing, grab a leaf, whoever. Like, I have to package your thing the right way and make it have a look and make it have a feeling so that when people get it, you know, them can say, okay, me see the idea where they are catch. Like, that's the mood me get or that are the feeling. Or even if they don't get the same mood or feeling, is like, you know, just the visuals behind something will kind of give them the idea like, oh, yo, me see where I'm trying to. Like, if you really think about it, like how much time songs drop and you be like, yo, I fuck with this song. But then when the visual drop or if it, they drop with a video, like it give you like a whole... Yeah, completely you know, different, different concept. Meaning. Of this yeah. Song. yeah, so it's just that, bro. Like we have just packaged things the right way. Nah, nah, mm-hmm. you're right. Definitely. Especially in the part where you're saying um, like giving your music to certain people because to be honest, that's how I first heard about you. Um. I heard about you from 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 my brother Gaza Prince. Gaza Prince, me and Gaza Prince really yeah, grew up together, yeah, basically. Yeah, so well, he he forwarded the music, you know, to everybody put it in his YouTube, SoundCloud, everything like that. And then when I first heard it, I was like, "Yo, like, yeah. oh, what, what was the first song I heard? I feel like it was the Sexy Secret." Yeah. Yeah. So Gaza Gaza Prince, I'm a G, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. So definitely we're, we're giving your music to the right people and, and you know, having people share it out the right way. Yo, yo, I know a long time ago, Gaza Prince, you know, bro, and Gaza Prince been just like a reposting thing them for me, you see me? I really like last year and the year before, like we kind of, you know, became closer than we, we usually were, you see me? I didn't even fit up on him last with him, but because I have so much things I do, like I couldn't really find the time and space and, you know, I never communicate properly because I got through so much. But like Gaza Prince and, and, and many others, you know, have helped me to, to be where I am today. You see me? So big up Gaza Prince to that. Um, and, you know, he him, him see the seriousness of it. Him see how, how serious me is about it. Him see how hard my work, how much, you know, my go at it whenever me I promote. Yeah. I always reach out to him whenever my drop songs and thing. Like, you know, him having my audience, him always put me to the audience. Say, you get me? I'm, saying, I'm forever grateful for that. And everybody else like him who have, supported me who have given me a listening ear who have sent the music to people isn't me yeah, definitely bro so i you got you got songs with sarani you got older songs with noah you got songs with stock actually got songs with a lot of people do you feel like you have a dream collab or or a certain person you want to collab with you got conscience and everybody you said i don't me used to wait for your i don't have song drop on already is in my dairy every day. Like when I hear dairy every day, I never even hear the I don't know. I hear the Mataran because one of my dad did link with Mataran at the time. I did hear, I think, Ding Dong and Elephant Man song. I did hear the cartel and I did hear a couple other songs. But when I hear the I don't know, I said, I read him in bad. <laughs> That's yeah, how yeah, yeah. biased I did be. So my dream collab with a dancer artist would have been I don't know. With a reggae artist, I don't know if you'd have really considered Damien Marley if it be reggae, but. Me consider him reggae. He, he's not sing the, the, the grimy shit. But yeah, me consider him reggae. Um, I definitely love to collab with Junior Gang. And also, I'm a big fan of Sizzler. Been always a fan of Sizzler. Mm. So them artists, they really and truly. You see me? Got you, got you. So uh, a few a few more than, you know, we go, we go let the people hear some of your music. But... There's a is a merge of something called you know Trinidad right now Trinidad dancehall. 
How do you feel about Trinidad in your opinion? Yo, all right, this is the thing. And I've I've been on SoundCloud and I'm in um, many other platforms talking about just like the progress of all music. Personally, I feel like it's the same music. It's still dancehall. Yeah. Whether you're doing it from Trinidad, fucking Antigua, St. Lucia, whatever, it's one dancehall. And I'm, I'll never say these artists should not be doing our kind of music. Mm-hmm. It's stupid. I agree with because that. At the end of the day, it's one Caribbean. Like, if you check it right now, if we if, 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 if we for host a World Cup or whatever, we'd have to be connected as one because we're all a small unit in the same space. Exactly. Of North America, in that little ocean, in that, that little space. So, technically, I feel like all of us are one. Whether you speak Creole, whether you speak French, whether you speak whatever the fuck you speak. If you are a part of that little space in the ocean... <laughs> And you use from a Caribbean island, no matter where it's from, you have the right to do the kind of music where we do. And I feel like the more we come together to, together as an entity and kind of just like make it one music from the Caribbean, whether it's soca, whether it's dance or whatever, and we stand behind each other and we push it, it becomes better for us. No, personally, definitely. personally, brother, me read Prince Swan here for. But wish me could I get a LinkedIn because I do a fucking collab with him tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Great Swanee, there's an next name, Javiolani, Javiolani. Yeah, I know you're talking I'm about, here, yeah. Yeah, I hear two songs from him. Um, the you, the you, and we're dead when you're King Lion. Like, I yeah. always yeah, check K, out. K Lion, Rebel yeah, Six. Yeah, Rebel Six, too. I'm mm-hmm. um, like, I fuck with them music. I fuck with them sound. I'm see where it's forward from. Because I've I've been on song um like I said what what's that thing name the the new the new song app which one are you talking about just mentioned it a while ago Clubhouse oh yeah, yeah I heard yeah, yeah. somebody talking like yo you know Trinidad artists are followed from the slums and you know they never get airplay and that is why them start doing it. like I'm from a similar situation yeah but I'm a come from Jamaica and because me they find is like people find it hard to play my music you see me and that's when I was like yo fuck airplay me I got to the girl them hard. Mm-hmm. Is it? And so come a fine song like um a fine song like Bad Man and them song they were just kind of ranchy. It's not when we did one do initially, but I just realized that when I talk about certain things, it's like the girl them skin catch a fire. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna six to see it when me are, you know it's like a bun song, you see me, and then I got feelings, you know, me have a bag of girl I'm in the journey feel it's just an argument. I'm realizing that shit where people love I'm gonna stop care about radio radio shit is like Menor said it, it's important and I'll never downplay it like it's not, you know, of importance. But I'm realizing I never get the radio strength fully. I'm going on the streets, I'm going to get the girl in my attention. And guess what? That go back to the radio play because the girl, I'm, you know, start requesting people, start, yeah. them start fuck with the thing. So DJs have no other choice but to play the thing now. And I just want to start thinking, okay, I have one or few DJs interested in me. I got the radio edits in my song. Then. You have to play it smart. But my, my, my fuck with the Trinidad sound. I hope it evolves. I hope, you know, more Trinidad artists and dancer artists can kind of like collab and, you know, put our music on a different fucking level. Because I feel like dancers, soca, reggae, like everything is cloaked up in one. Mm-hmm. I feel like now is the time for kind of just like separate it, but then know what is what. Like if you do a soca song, even as a dancer artist, you have to push it in a soca market and get all the soca people behind it. Let's get all of the soca love. Whether you come from Trinidad, Jamaica, wherever, like the same vibe with dance art. buy the music, stream the music, put your friends on to the shit. That's how like our thing evolves. Like we have to be like one. That's the Caribbean. only way for it to grow. Yeah, even if we have a little Caribbean thing on the internet, you know, like people fucking all the time and be like, you know, try to make it seem like Jamaica more important than Trinidad and are we more important? Like, no, bro. Like we're all one. We're all one people. You get what I mean? I say, um, like, as much as you know, we have kind of like different cultures, it's still very close. You see, I mean, we have to make the music one, collab together, put it out to another world. Yeah, yeah, see? yeah. Now, I definitely yeah. respect that, respect that response. You get a lot, I ask that question to a lot of people, and you get a lot of different responses from people. Some people respond to the complete opposite, some people say they, they can't see it lasting long. and Nah, so I definitely respect that response because I agree with it. I definitely agree with it. Many many a times that new song evolves and we hear it and we'll be like, yo, this is not going to last too long. When we hear Champa come out first, like that's what they said. When Genius come out with him song, like, you know, um, in the early 2000s while he was fucking in high school, everybody was like, yo, this is not a dancer, you know, this is not going to last too long. The jump pattern, I did this. 
and like will look like it inspire a whole other thing. You see me? And then after Jordan, I mean, after Genius came Jordan and Chimney and many others. You see me? I say, Sean is and other people who were inspired by that sound are inspired to kind of like branch out from their own thing. And they created their own sounds. Like we have Red Bull and Guinness by Sean is one of the biggest with them in a dancer. Mm-hmm. You get me? I say, we have Chrome did go into producing and them, you know, him and Genius call up on some things, him and Dan call, call up on some things. Like, like we see so many different sounds and, and patterns coming at dance hall. Like, I feel like we just have to kind of stop, be this judgmental about everything and be like, yo, this not going to work and that not going to work, especially when it's working. Yeah, yeah. Like, when it's working, we be like, we, we, we be like them hip-hop cats, yeah. Look how trap music come out. And, you know, one of a few hip-hop artists complain like, Ray, but then look, like, it's the wave right now. You see me, mumble rap, same thing. Like everybody mm-hmm. be like, your future is whack or whatever. Like he's the fucking goat right now. Yeah, that's what's popular right so now. So much artists start mumble rap. And that's the thing. We need to embrace some of these sounds. And, you know, if you're older head you and you have a problem with the sound, you know, go around the youth and be like, yo, you know, say, this would have bad with the drum pattern in your dance hall trap or whatever the case may be. You know, educate them on how to mix them thing a, a dance hall where whatever. If you have a problem with it, like go around the youth them. And show them a way for kind of, you know, not lose the culture and at the same time not complain and make them feel uncomfortable. Because yeah. we've seen, like, in, in, in even cases with artists, I've seen, like, people bash Tamalee because I'm son or I'm voice or whatever. And look what Tamalee come off to be right now. Like, he's one of the top dancer artists. Remember mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, them say, yo, them on us, me hear people say him sound like Ram Goat, him sound like Vibrator. Like, I've heard so many <laughs> fucking different comparisons. And then he turned out to be one of the artists in dance where we fuck up your show. Yeah. Learn it, him grow. And then it, it all stemmed from, you know, him have encounters with people and them same people eh, come for teach him thing. And you see him like the demonic thing. So you see where positive influence can have. Like influence somebody you with them now for kind of incorporate the dance hall and then not lose sight of where the culture is coming from if you have a problem with it. And just try to enhance it instead of try to kill it and shut it down. Because when you check it, everything in life changes. Like back in other days, me used to wear fucking pucker jeans and light up shoes. Majority of these niggas nowadays don't know what a pucker jeans is. Yeah. Or a fubu jeans or a fubu shoes or <laughs> nothing from that. Like, brother, may I wear lacoste before them things they become popular, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember them days. They say where at first niggas used to ridic- ridicule me. And I, even other day, one of my dogs, I say, yo, you know, you're the first fucking dog me seen one of them lacoste shoes, yeah. You see me? A diesel pants, a diesel shoes. Mm-hmm. So we've seen over the years how fashion has changed. Music has to change too. People now wear mesh marina again, brother. People are wearing pants <laughs> in this bad shirt with them can find a H&M. So it's the same thing with music. It's a product where have to just kind of, you know, make the, the youth them forward back to the natural sound sometimes because we've seen like where dance are kind of, you know, stray from where it used to be. Yeah. But then we see where it can come back. We see people sample the music, even if I not our people, they must still black people are like for example, Tory Lanes though. What's the Tantametra and Devante stand? Well um the the weekend and the everyone falls in love. Yeah, that's yeah. It. You see me? So we see said we see said them thing they can happen. We see said success can come from the yeah. just for us to kind of like nurture the talent them where arise and just put a hand around them and be like, yo, this is where dance all come from. You know? I guarantee you right now, if any fucking producer get a chance to be around jammies, are the world to them. Mm-hmm. And you know what that are going to lead them to? It might lead them to getting samples. It might lead them to getting drum kits, drum patterns, whatever. We are going to influence a song. We can bring a different dance out. Or sample something from back then with a current song. Is it me? I definitely agree. I feel like it's all about teaching each other and definitely uniting so we could create something larger. You understand? I definitely agree. I definitely want that. to ask one of my last questions. Do you feel like you have a favorite song? And I want you to introduce one of the songs, one of you, one of the songs you feel like is your top songs so the people can hear. Yeah, I bet you end the interview in a <laughs> <laughs> can put my top 10. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and this is in no specific order. I feel like um I've recently knew Celine because of where it's coming from. That that song is coming from like a deep place, isn't it? Um yeah, we're not gonna go into that, but like that song came from a very deep place. It was a it was an experience that I 
um i never thought that i would have as a person you see me and then after experience it like i did i kind of had to like put it in music for for make the person who was affected by the situation just know like you see me mm-hmm. so that song was personal um i'd say sex is secret because of just the topic and and delivery and the vibe of my fine the day it was like channel channel um channeling a whole different new vibe um 50 shades because i feel like that song the brother some things let me see woman do because of the song the dog boy i don't know if <laughs> so so 50 shades 50 shades would have been like number seven on the list um i got drop feelings in a hit you see me it was a it was a it was, it was a crazy collab like and I, I don't i've never met starkash before but you know when they reached out to me and you know them send her thing them and whatever and be like yo you know collab and whatever because the song feelings was before her oh, it was okay. the original feeling version of feelings before and her producer had reached out to me and be like yo make a remix this whatever and then it was between her and Jada Kingdom, but we did already have a song with Jada Kingdom, and I'm like, yo, it wouldn't make no sense. Let her remix her next song when the yeah. first remix couldn't even come out. So I was like, yo, I'd choose Star Ashley. And you know, she basically she basically counteracted most of what I said and you know, just kind of add her sauce to it. And she fucking killed it. Like she has a, an amazing voice. I must wish her all the best as an artist and you know, hope the right people go around her and, and thing. Stay in the right direction. She has a bright future, amazing talent. You see me? But that's that's definitely one of my favorite collabs. That would have been one. Number six. Um, number five, my god put solo in there. Mm. I remember the first time I performed solo in fucking New York. That show was crazy, bro. <laughs> I feel like that I did one of my craziest experiences because at the time I never even know said the sound did so big on New York. So solo in a hit. Um, where the fuck am I? If God was that man, because personally, I feel like that was the first song for me that really gave me an a gave me like attention. You know, like that the first song that I ever got radio play from. Um, you know, they kind of have a different message because me I talk about God and like, yeah, and all of them things. It's like people never them time that people never really know me still. So that coming from me, people they feel like me. I try to be a cultural artist. But you know, it's just everyday life experience, and I forgot. I forgot. I think I was on Twitter the day when we come up with the song. There. You see me? But yeah, the song then I hit. Um, one touch, one touch because of the success. When I released one touch, it was just a vibe song again. You see me? Just a look a bun song. You see me? Um, but they piggyback off of everything when me I say go on. Cranium did have nobody I feel no one. Couple other people did have some bun song. You see me? I did have a little one experience still. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, fuck it, my guys put the shit in that song. No, you're it, you man, but one foot, no, I kill you. And you see me, I have the song for a couple months and be a DJ, chromatic sound, you know. All of the popular DJs, they have run with it. And then we'll do the radio version. And every day, they on the radio, Jamaica people are saying snaps and video. And the feeling was crazy, bro. And then, you know, me and my producer linked back up and he was shooting videos at the time. We do a video, the video air on BET, MTV and the whole works. And mm. Success of that song and the attention that it brought led me to where I am today. Is it me? So I have to say that song there. Oh, I'm going to go in a Spotify real quick and check something. Yeah, yeah, cool. I said go in a Spotify. I'm going to like what? That's a number six, right? Um, oh, whatever. Whatever. I'm going to put Melanin in there. All right. yeah. Melanin is the song with conscience, but I'm going to put the whole project. Mm. Because for me, this, this project was special. You don't know my mother black, my grandmother black, like majority, of, like my family member, them black. You see me? And I remember I was having a, a conversation with this close friend. And you know, like I always comment on like a melanin, melanin skin color, whatever. And she just always used to find it unusual. And like, yo, may I, may I say to myself, like, yo, we need to make this common. We need to make, you know, telling black girls that they're beautiful more common. And that's yeah. what inspired the project, release it International Women's Day. So that whole project special to me. The melanin song stick out, you don't know, conscience feature, conscience killing verse. Is it me? Would it just, I mean, they just converse with him at the time and show him the vision for the project and everything we may I tell you right now. And then they love the idea and be like, yo, man, I'll give you a verse. You know, and it's like the first time we ever call up because we've worked before, but it was on his stuff. Mm-hmm. And then when we get the verse, I was like, boom, 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 boom. So that song, they know it. 
I feel like we'll, we'll have like two more. Yeah, when you when you name it the last one, I want you to intro it because we definitely gonna make all the people hear everything that you just now named, but we're gonna kick it off with that with, with that last one and we're gonna go from there. All right, so we had the second to last one. The second yeah, to yeah, last yeah. song for me is been on my mind. Um LMR Pro was the first person who ever gave me a chance to record in a studio. And them telling me I had a bad man thing and so like Donnie and the whole works and you know, like he was learning his shit, I was learning my shit, and he gave me the chance of voice at the time. You know, and over the years, like, you know, I've been always doing my thing, but in my head, I say, oh, you know, I really need to work with that dog, and we used to always ask him for really, man, why, and we used to work on things, but it was not never concrete, and I never finished the idea, or it never come out good, or some shit. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you know, I fuck this shit. And then... Um, I was working on dopamine, like I legit used two weeks to re- record like 80% of the, the thing. And I remember I had to go to New York for like, I think it was a show real quick. And I was like, yo, okay, and I released a, my, my debut album, I'm going to have LMR on it. And I, him can tell you, I'm going to call him every single day for the five days my day in New York and be like, yo, I'm going to go one day for pull up at your studio. And it so happened that you know, I did a show. No, I like, did have a show the next day, I think. You see me? And um, I did link up with a sister in of mine. And, you know, with their flex and whatever. And, you know, just get some shit. Like, a very close friend of mine. And then I was, like, saying to her, like, yo, you know, more record a song tonight and whatever. And she's like, yo, go for it. You see it? Like, you know, but I feel like you need to be, like, a little bit more soft with your approach. You know, woman stare. They always yeah, yeah, yeah. For, you for do what them like. And, you know, seeing that this was a very close friend of mine, you see me, and, you know, we always have, like, positive and, and, and you know, good conversations. I was, like, asking her, like, what kind of song? And just, she was like, yo, just sing about a girl, tell her you miss her, or some shit. And when she said that, it's like, I never had nobody I missed at the time. You see me, did not a perfectly good relationship, the whole works. And I was like, yo, I'm going to try it, see me. I'm going to go to the studio, um, you know, I'm going to link up with LMR and play a couple beats. And that one did just stick out to me, dog. From me here, the first couple of phrases, I was like, fuck. And I remember when they did it, I mean, it's a fool around with it. Be the mama, be the mama, won't you? And I remember Ty come out of the studio and she was like, yo, the melody, they're bad. Mm. You know, I don't know if you know Ty. And, but yeah, she, she, she was like, yo, that crazy. And it's like, once she said that, it's like it struck a nerve because like I was working with her, like when we start my project, like she was the one who kind of, like working with her kind of prompt me for doing my project. My producer, Sean Alaric, and the whole way there work on fear thing. And he was like, yo, do some of them sang for yourself. So that kind of started. So if you hear it from her, like it was a solid melody and a vibe. I was like, yo, you know, I'm going to do a whole song about this. Let's go into the studio and voice it. And, you know, the love I'm get from it, even to this day, brother, you know, even the Serrani remix where you're there talk about, that stemmed from it too. That's mm. one of the things that did make sure and hear me and, and rate the music and whatever. So, yeah, I'm definitely, I guess I've been on my mind. Um, I did say dopamine down the list, but I feel like dopamine for forward have been on my mind. They have been on my mind <laughs> a little bit before. But I don't know specific all about For me, the biggest song for me is Tambourine. Um, you know, however I want to look at it. At, at first, it wasn't like my favorite song. Um, I wasn't thinking of it as, as nothing big. Like, literally, you know, track star, I did, I'm a G, you see me, and, like, him did have, you know, he never have a rhythm at the time, but him did just have, him just have an energy, you know, we, we make you want to work with him, and then me and him at Gemini, like, we did a clash, and, like, we always talk about music, and we have musical conversations, and we always exchange words, but on the gram, and whatever, and, you know, we just have flex like thugs, and bridging, and, um, I remember he was here like last year for Memorial Weekend and he said, yo, bro, I go there, you know, you know him going already. I'm there, you know, dog, when if you link up, Ray. I say, you know, link up nothing, man. You ever come and say, I go link up. And he said, all right, watch. And then him get the Airbnb the night and literally reach back me there right now. I wish I could have seen, but I have like my home set up and everything, you see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my, my, my mic and everything like me just bring it everything I'm gonna have so I just did that kind of different I did have like a sheet around it mm-hmm. just pack up everything and throw in my car the day and my drive go over there and like I literally burn weed till I not even remember my name dog <laughs> <laughs> I'm just outside and just a vibe and bro like 
I was on the on the phone with a next friend of mine, a G of mine from from Ireland or two. And I'm telling him, say, you buy something bad tonight, you know, cause the voodoo sound you know, where truck star have. Like, must I play? I remember Genius did day over the Airbnb too. And I'm go back inside and you know, my energy up and why mm-hmm. um, that's a, that the, the first couple of lines when me did find was all I'm a girl them a nine plus one. And if a girl left, I have nine options. Girl I said the thing I shot like a wild gun, man. But like a cartel song, your track star. And then the blood clot voodoo song go jump. Mm-hmm. I mean, I say, yo, it's have a vibe to it. And I mean, I say, what me can say? Girl, I say, me sweet, like, mm-hmm. I'm in a new to the girl thing now. And genius out of nowhere, this I say, yo, say, sweet, like, tambourine. <laughs> I look around for him, like, yo, fuck your talk about that. Tambourine be even sweet. But then now he's like, yo, yeah, remember them sell sweet tambourine at the store, them in New York. And why have I'm, like, me have flashback of that because me see that already. I mean, yeah. I say, I say, yo, but people are going to miss it, dog. And Chuck started say, yo, fuck where people are going to think. Let's make the fucking song. And we make the song, brother. And literally have it from Memorial Day, which is like, you know, May to my birth, like literally the day before my birthday. You see me? And um, I remember I was in a writing session. I write something for the dog and Chuck started just linked me out of the blues. I never post no video or no nothing. First thing the man says, I'm calling upon FaceTime. You ain't not record the fucking verse, them. <laughs> you know, I'm like, bro, so record the thing, them, man. You say, yo, where are they right now? I say, yo, I do want a studio session. I help somebody with something I write. I was writing for somebody else. And him say, yo, just, just try and match the thing, them, for me. And like that was like literally close to the end of the session. I'm going to turn to the producer. I'm say, yo, I can have both. Just give me a second for voice to verse. And he said, I just add it to the tab. And he said, no, man, you have 45 minutes. I'm said, all right, cool. Bro, literally 20 minutes music and voice, the two verse them on the song. Yeah. And I shot it to him like effortless. Like, like, I don't think nothing of it. I have my birthday party the next day upon my mind. Nothing, I don't think, bro. Brother, I released the song. He released the song literally the same night or the morning. And dog, when I tell you, say, at the first meal, I my social media goes so crazy. Nah, time was definitely bad. Brother, when I put on my phone, I may see a notification. Now, we never even post, we never post a song on YouTube yet. We never have it nowhere for stream yet. I have a snippet my post in a, in a thing with him. I drive to it and I dropped up. And then I post it on my page and like the reaction I get, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> they made like, brother, may I talk about the amount of verified page that message me? Like all of my talks, they must say, yo, you're fine, it, you know, bro. Mm. And the girl, I go crazy, and I'm like, bro, I've never got this reaction for no song I ever dropped in my whole music career. And then, you know, like we did it, and the song literally had about seven grand views. We never, we kind the the the, the feeling where we did have feet, it kind of dwindled down and whatever. And like, yeah, I said to myself, like, nah, brother, like the reaction, they can't just be a one day thing. It can't just be a because Ray. But then, you know, I kind of just start pushing the song, pushing the song, pushing the song, pushing the song, pushing the song. Everywhere I go, I push the song. Like, I remember I go up on Twitter and say, yo, dub session. But they literally over 700 dub. I kid you not. For that one yeah. fucking song there for free. And like, I just have every DJ I play it. Everybody. You see, I start reaching out to the DJ, them on the radio. Everybody where I'm cool with. Everybody where I'm cool with and never ask for no favors, I start asking the favors them. And then now, you know, um, the label that I'm signed to right now, Delicious Vinyl, like, it, it so happened that me and them have a conversation and they were like, yo, like, let's do a video. Let's fly you out to California. And like, at first I was like, oh shit, like the fuck? Like, nobody never asked me for flight when I was here. Like, people ask me for flight, come for work, but not for shit pertaining to me. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 sure. Like, let's do it. And fly me out to California, G, and like, <laughs> shot the video. Um, I didn't invite Charge. We literally do highlight this video two days after. But after we do the video and we drop it, brother, like, that shit just got places. Dancers from all over the world, girls, DJs, everybody start fuck with it. You see me? But yeah, I definitely say, because of the, sub, the success and how much, you know, um, attention, I've, attention I've garnered from, like, tambourine, for me, I just sang it. The song there, tambourine dopamine, them two song there. Melanin, melanin a creep up there, you know. Africa side, I love melanin, but them two song there, tambourine dopamine, 
look a bit of sexy secret because of the ladies them you know, feel like them three and they kind of you know make people know who chaos is um make people know that i'm a serious talent you see me and uh, just a dibby dibby thing that that make enough people believe in it so them three and there for me got That's you got it. you got you at the top 10 <laughs> <laughs> definitely people you heard it here at top 10 from chaos you already know what it is fresh hair rich links pure vibes online radio with chaos We're gonna end it off man chaos tell the people what are we talking about yeah man we talk about tambourine you see me badness and girl thing you know the whole works big up fresh big up rich link song big up gaza prince gaza prince i'm a g man i said that and i kept the camera you know the work you see me Gaza Prince are real, you will support the thing all the time. So, and I just the interview, yeah, I'm going to nightly fix, I'm going to wherever the fuck, I'm going to have to big up Gaza Prince. You see, because I believe in the thing and give it strength when enough people never do it. So, forever ratings, my God, is it? Like I said, big up Rich Links, fresh, big up yourself, just continue to work and stay up on the path. And big up all of the listeners, them, man, is it? Badness and girl things straight. Yeah, definitely. All right, out. <laughs>